So you can use media queries to customize the way your content appears on a page, depending on what type of device it's being viewed on. So this allows you to create more responsive designs depending on whether your page is being displayed on either a tablet, mobile device, or desktop. And you can change any of the styling that you need to within a media query for any of your content depending on what device it's being shown on. But it's mostly common to actually change the layouts so that your content actually fits better in a mobile device rather than trying to squish the large content of a desktop site onto a mobile device. So in this tutorial, we're going to look at how you can set up media queries and how you can use them to customize the look of a site and also the layout of the content, depending on what device it's being displayed on. So to demonstrate our media query rules, I've got a simple project set up and it has a simple bit of markup in with a heading level one tag, a paragraph, and I've also created this grid type system with rows and columns. So on the desktop version, everything looks okay, but if we were to switch over to the responsive view, so if we were to go to a mobile device or tablet, you can see those columns don't look very good and we'd be better if we stacked them one on top of the other. So throughout the tutorial, we're going to set up several media queries and they will address some of the issues that we've got on this sample page. But to get going, let's set up a basic media query. So the syntax for a media query is to use the at symbol and then the word media, and then we need to write a rule or a condition that needs to be met before the new styling changes take effect. So as a trivial example, let's say if we wanted to say when the page, the overall page of the browser that we're working with is a maximum width of 700 pixels, then we can open up a new block of CSS. So inside here are any rules that you want to be applied if the screen size is less than 700 pixels. So for example, we could target our heading level one tag and change its color to green. So we see no effect on the page at the moment. And if you look in the top right hand corner of our Chrome window, you can see that the number of pixels for the height and width of the page is actually displayed. So you can see the width is now going down as I'm shrinking the page. So when we hit the media query breakpoint of 700 pixels, you should see that heading level one tag changed to green. So that in a nutshell is how media queries work. You simply provide some boundaries in terms of how large or small you want your page to be and what styling rules you wish to apply. And with the rules that you set up, they can actually have multiple conditions. So along with having a maximum width for a particular rule, we could say there is a min width that needs to be met before this rule is applied. So we can have a min width of 600 pixels. So in our browser, we're actually at about 700 pixels at the moment. So as we go below 700 pixels, the heading level one tag changes green. And just as we go under 600 pixels, as that's the minimum width for our rule to take effect, you'll see that the heading level one tag changes to its original color. So using these combinations of rules, it's quite easy to set up complicated media queries to affect the way that your site appears, paying on the available space that you have on the device. So let's take a look at a more useful example if we just remove the existing query that we have there. So it's quite common on different devices to have different sized fonts, as we'll want a font to appear larger or smaller depending on the device that it's appearing on. So we can set a rule up for that saying media if the min width is 1000 pixels, just as an example, I'm going to set the overall font size for the document to 30 pixels. And because all of the other styling rules that I've got set up in my initial CSS file are using relative M's, then changing that base font size will affect all elements on the page. So now if we make our browser larger than 1000 pixels in width, You can see that all the text on the page and any other elements, including the columns that are using the relative M's are updated. Of course, one of the main principles of responsive design is to actually move around or resize containing elements on the page so that we make the most of the available space. So as we saw before, those columns don't appear very well on a smaller device. So let's write some media queries now to actually change the way those columns appear, depending on the size of the device that they're being viewed on. So the first breakpoint I'll create is a media query of a max width of 700 pixels. And I'm going to target the column elements, which is basically each of these gray boxes here. I'm going to update the width property for the smaller screen size that we're working with. I'm going to use the CSS calc function and it's going to be 50% minus the two rems that are set up for its margin. So for this, any screen size under 700 pixels should have two columns on a row side by side. 
So let's shrink down our browser size to 700 pixels or less. So as soon as we go below 700 pixels, you can see instead of having three columns on a row, we have two, with the third being pushed to the row underneath. So it doesn't matter how small the screen gets after this, for example if we go back to our responsive view, you can see we've still got those two columns. So we'd need to write a further media query if we wanted to get in, into a single column on the mobile or tablet views. So this final media query will actually kick in at under 500 pixels and it will set all of the columns width to 100%, thereby taking up the full width of the containing element that's above it, thereby just giving us one column per row. So you can see when we hit the breakpoint, all of the columns are laid out in individual rows and going to our responsive view, you can see that content now appears in a much more easier to view manner. Of course, for our column classes, we're not just restricted to modifying its width property. We can also modify any other CSS properties. For example, we've got quite a lot of white space around each column, which is just wasted space on a mobile device. So we could remove the margin from the left and right. And this will only be applied while we're in the max width of 500 pixels. As soon as we go outside of that, the margin will be restored. So affecting sizing and layout is probably one of the key principles of responsive design using media queries. But the rules that media queries look for can target a lot more than just the width of the browser or device that's being used. For example, we can do a form of feature detection and apply rules depending on whether that feature exists. So for example, we can say media hover. And this will check if the device has the ability to hover. So a desktop browser will have this feature and a mobile device will not. So if that's the case, we can then target an element such as the heading level one tag. And then we can actually say, if we're hovering over that, let's change the color to green. And you can see that working on the desktop view. But as soon as we switch to the mobile responsive view, so we're emulating a mobile device here, obviously you can't hover on a mobile device. So when we go to the heading level one tag, you see that hover effect no longer works. Another thing that you can do with media queries as well is to determine whether the device that you have, or at least the page that's being displayed on the device, is in a portrait or landscape mode. So this is just another rule that we use with our media query. So we can say media orientation is landscape. And again, we just have another block of CSS here where we can customize any styles for elements on our page. So for example, if our device is in a portrait mode, then the rule does not take effect, but we can switch our device into a landscape mode. And you can see that media query is now taking effect and the paragraph text has been changed to a green color. One final thing about media queries is you can actually target different types of media, with the main ones being a screen, such as a desktop browser or a mobile device screen, and the other being print, which is the format the browser uses when the user is trying to print a web page. So we can target the print media by using media, print, and then we can put any rules inside of there that we want to take effect when the user is trying to print the web page. So now in our browser, if we go and try and actually print this web page, as you can see in the print preview, the paragraph text that was set to display as none is no longer appearing and won't be sent to the printer. So the use cases for this are slightly less common, but if you can imagine that you were printing a receipt for a customer, so you might want to customize how that looks by removing any unnecessary information, for example, or just making it a bit more friendly for printing to a device. So that's how you use media queries in your CSS code to actually affect the way elements appear and behave on web pages. Probably the most useful and common technique is to actually change the layout of pages depending on the size of screen that it's been displayed on. But as you can see, there's other things that you can do with media queries to affect the way the content looks on different devices. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you found that useful and don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorials and I'll see you in the next video.